Are you not the Christ? Then save yourself and us. These are the words of one of the criminals crucified on either side of Jesus. Jesus does not respond to him. He does not say anything, nor does it, nor does it seem does he do anything. He does not come down from the cross. What are we to make of this? What are, you make, what are we to make of this king? By any reasonable human standard, this Jesus, despite what it says over his head, does not seem to be a king. After all, where is his power? Where is his wealth? Where are his fine robes? Where is his splendid throne? If we think about it, Jesus acts so differently from us. When we are falsely accused, we try immediately to clear our name. When someone hurts us, it's only natural to want to hurt them back. If we have power, we want to use it. If we have wealth, we want to enjoy the benefits of it. But Jesus does not act in that way at all. Why then is Jesus so different from us? Why does he act so differently than so often we do? Yes, Jesus is God, but he's also fully human. Well, for one thing, Jesus does not have to prove himself to anyone. He is indeed a king, not merely the king of the Jews, but in fact, the king of all creation. His kingship does not depend on military might, political power, or even popular acclamation. It is who he is. As St. Paul says in the second reading, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible. All things were created through him and for him. Think about this for a moment. Everything, and I mean everything, has come into existence through him. When we make something, we take some measure of pride in it. It could be the design of a building, a piece of art, a musical composition, an assignment well done, a project completed. Think then how much more Jesus must love you. You who are the handiwork of all his creation. If you ever watched an episode of The Crown, you know that the title sequence begins with a kind of panoramic view of the British imperial crown. It's a splendid jeweled crown with all sorts of diamonds and other precious stones. Of course, the Netflix series is about the reign of the now late Queen Elizabeth II. The crown that she wore has been passed on to her son, King Charles III. But what about the crown of Jesus? The crown of Jesus looks quite different than the British imperial state crown or the crown of any other earthly sovereign for that matter. It is not a crown of gold, silver, and precious stones, but rather it is a crown made of thorns. What was meant as a sign of mockery has become a true sign of who this king really is. For Jesus reigns not for any self-interest, but rather he sacrifices everything for us. His, his crown is never passed on to someone else, for there is no successor to Jesus Christ. He is the eternal king, and he will reign forever and ever. As many of you know, I enjoy foreign travel, and I've seen my fair share of royal thrones in different countries. And just like his crown, 
Jesus' throne is quite different from that of any human potentate. If we think about a throne for a moment, a throne shows the power of the monarch, for the monarch remains seated while others stand in attentive service. The throne of Jesus is not some gilded chair, but rather a rough wooden cross. It is not used as a sign to remind us of how inferior we are to our king, but rather is the ultimate sign of Jesus' humility and love. Instead of demanding that we serve him, Jesus offers his life for us. Quite the contrast from any earthly king or ruler. Now the cross of Jesus does bear one resemblance to a throne. It is raised. But it is raised not so much to say how important he is, but rather Jesus is raised on the cross so that we can know how important we are to him. In our first reading, we see the remaining tribes of Israel going to David and offering him their allegiance. They ask him to be their king, but in truth, they long for more than just a king. They had a king in Saul. They want much more than that. As the scriptures show, what they really want is a shepherd, someone who can lead them and serve them in love. David, of course, consents to the request. And overall, David is a good king. But he is an imperfect king. At times, he allows his own self-interest to take precedence over the needs of his people. But not Jesus. He always, always puts our needs above his. So much so that he suffers and dies for us. Oh, what a king he is. Now let's go back to Calvary, to those two criminals crucified on either side of Jesus. I said before that Jesus does not seem to answer the request that the one, uh, of the one thief to save them. In fact, he does answer. He's answer. He answers him not by leaving, but by stay, uh, but not by leaving, not by saving himself but rather by staying, by staying on the cross. This is so amazing if we think about it. In this we see God's tremendous love for us. He does not abandon us in our suffering. He never does. Jesus does not offer us mere pity, but rather he stays and suffers with us. When suffering comes our way, our first inclination is to try to get out of it, just like the bad thief. How many times have we cried out to God in moments of great pain and heartache, Lord, take it away. Save me from this hour. It's just too hard to bear. If you think about it, that would be the easiest thing for God to do, just to remove the suffering at the moment. The harder thing to do is to do exactly what Jesus does. He not only stays with us in our suffering, but he suffers with us. This is precisely who our king is. Surely, if we know that, if we realize that, that is why we are here today. We come not just for a nice ceremony, Hopefully not just to check some box, but rather you come to immerse yourself and to be immersed in the very life of Christ, the King. You come to encounter him anew, to be united with him forever, no matter what comes your way. You come looking not for some magic man, but rather for a savior. The good thief, often called Dismas, sees and understands what Jesus is doing. It's a moment of profound insight. He sees that Jesus is not going to abandon them in their hour of need. And so this man's sinful heart is transformed 
by his encounter with God himself. He only asks that Jesus remember him. And in that request, Jesus promises him paradise. The great irony here is that while it was the other criminal asked to be saved from his cross, it is this other one who is saved and given eternal life in paradise. This should be a moment of reflection for us all. How do we approach the throne of Jesus? Do we go to Jesus just to ask him to take care of what we need today? Or do we go to Jesus asking him to lead us into paradise? This beautiful feast of Christ the King affords us the occasion not just to celebrate our wonderful parish's feast, but it also gives us the opportunity to reflect on whether we allow Christ to reign in our lives, in our hearts. Before an earthly throne and to those wearing gilded crowns, people often pledge their loyalty, their fidelity, their allegiance to king and country. In truth, so often we have, we have greater allegiance to so many other things, family, friends, careers, hobbies, or passions, or even worse, often we are tempted to try to depose the Lord in favor of ourselves. We make right and wrong based on what we feel or what we want to do. This is all too common in our society today. There is no faith in God if we only place faith in ourselves or in our own abilities. There is no middle ground here. We must allow Christ to reign in our hearts. This does not mean to subject ourselves to some arbitrary and capricious king who is mainly interested in maintaining his grasp of power. But rather, it means that we open our hearts to our God and King and subject ourselves to his life and love. And that makes all the difference. When we truly allow the love of Christ into our hearts, everything changes. Nothing is ever the same again. We go to God not in mere obligation, but rather in love. And that same love transforms how we see others as well. Christ indeed is the king of the universe. He will reign forever. This is the mystery that we celebrate today. But is he indeed your king? Ask yourself this question on this Christ the King Sunday. Does he in fact reign in your heart or not?